Vivemos um golpe de Estado corporativo em marcha lenta, que põe em risco democracias em todo o mundo. Foi o filósofo canadense John Ralston Sow quem fez essa afirmação pela primeira vez, em 1995. Desde então, cada vez mais esse golpe se repete em vários países, ameaçando os direitos dos cidadãos e privilegiando os interesses de grandes corporações. É esta questão que o diretor Fred Pibar investiga no filme Golpe Corporativo. Para isso, ele acompanha de perto a realidade norte-americana, que inclui desde a eleição de Donald Trump até o cotidiano de quem mais sofre com os efeitos do desemprego, do neoliberalismo e da globalização. Sobre o filme e sobre esse cenário complexo, que tem um paralelo muito atual com o Brasil, o diretor conversou conosco. Confira. You know... Globalization has has been wonderful for the the oligarchs, and usually when you say oligarch, people think, oh, you're talking about a Russian, uh, you know, a wealthy <laughs> billionaire in Russia. But America has its own oligarchs. Uh, Canada has its own oligarchs, and I'm sure Brazil does. Um, you know, the, the the globalization was great for the oligarchs all over the world, but not so great for. Uh, working class and poor people all over the world. How this idea has begun, like of telling the story of the, the corporation coup d'etat, because nowadays, right. I think corporates, they are so powerful that we take them for granted. You know what I mean? Like, this is the logic. That's the way it is. Like, how yeah. you decided to, you know? I've been thinking for a while, I would like to build a documentary around Chris Hedges because I had interviewed him in my previous film, All Governments Lie, uh, just a brief interview, and, and he was only in the film briefly. Uh, and I really wanted to do justice to him and, and uh, his ideas. So I kind of, I took that article, and, and uh, which was basically about how, you know, corporate elites are uh, ruining democracy in America. So um, that's kind of how it was born. It was born from me uh, following a journalist and being inspired by, by his work. I love listening to you telling me that you were following a good journalist because as I'm a journalist and also a documentarist, I, I yeah. still believe, I'm still naive to believe in journalism. And, you know what? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, you have to be, I tell people, you have to become an investigative journalist yourself a little bit to discover who are the good investigative journalists. I really like the way you begin relating Trump and the corporations to Mussolini because Mussolini was all about also propaganda. You know, we know yeah. propaganda is yeah. a very strong part of the process. So we are in the middle of like a propaganda media as well, like pretending they inform us, you know. The last elections yeah. I think in America and also in Brazil, we could see this very, very strongly. Yeah, it's, I mean, the internet and the sort of digital revolution that we, we are in the midst of, uh, it, it has had some unforeseen consequences, negative consequences that we're learning more and more about every day. Uh, and one of, one of them is the ability for uh, surveillance. Another is the ability to pose as someone you're not. And every intelligence agency in the world is on social media with fake IDs. And, and so does uh, you know, every country's intelligence agency, Russia, China, uh, Brazil, I'm sure. I mean, if you have an intelligent, if your country is big enough to have a, a a fair sized intelligence agency, then they are posing. They have some people uh, using fake IDs to try and influence people on social media. In your documentary, and also in reality, like I say, in everyday life, we say that many presidents, you know, in this globalized world, are puppets, you know, in the hands of the corporations, and there are hate groups you know, who are paid to divide society. What do, how do you see this? And how do you put this in your film? Well, well, just not, maybe not so much in my film because it wasn't happening yet. But what I see happening in the streets in America and all over the world uh, in, in, 
in the, the wave of protests uh, by, led by black people, but very much including huge numbers of younger white people. And they're all relatively younger people that are doing these protests. I see great hope in that. You know, um, as Chris Hedges said in a recent uh, interview, you know, the, the answer is in the streets. And he, he said, I see great, great hope on what's happening in the streets. I mean, he also said, uh, you know, black people have known all along that the system is totally rigged uh, against them. And, and now younger white people are starting to, to be aware of that too, that, that the system is totally rigged uh, against, um, particularly against uh, working class and poor people, but also against middle class people. And um, so the streets right now, you know, we see signs of hope all over the world in, the, in these protests. And um, it's, it's, it's a good sign. I, I've always said, I, I try to think when I'm making a film, at least my last two films, uh, of reaching, you know, the under 30 demographic. And a lot of them come to film festivals where my films are shown. And, uh, you know, I want to reach them uh, with this information because they, they are the hope for the future and hopefully they can do something about it. You know, back, I mean, back when I was a teenager, you know, back in the hippie psychedelic era, uh, we had a saying, never trust anyone over 30. But, you know, I, I still don't trust anyone over 30. <laughs> So that's why I think your film is really important because it, it makes us, you know, relate to Brazil, which is, which is really good. like Brazil is such a huge country in the hands of the populations. Yeah. So, tricky. And even, even though the corporate coup d'etat, my film, doesn't have much uh, reference to the environment, I think most people are aware that that uh, it, th these these huge corporations, which we point out, uh, basically have all the politicians in Washington D.C. in their pockets, except for a handful. Uh, these corporations, uh, they don't want you to know about climate change. They don't even want to hear that term used. Uh, they want deregulation, and and they're getting it all under Trump. So yeah, I think a lot of these corporations like most of us, uh, viewed Trump and still view Trump as a moron. Uh, but he is a useful moron, a useful idiot. And he's giving the corporate elites everything they could want. So uh, why change? They're probably thinking, they're probably thinking, oh, we should have tried an idiot earlier. You know, <laughs> he seems to be giving them things that even the normal conservative politicians uh, could not achieve. Uh, kind of diabolical. <laughs> How do yeah. you see the next American election, by the way? Well, I, I, I have to say, uh, I, I think there's a chance that Trump could win it. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of Joe Biden. Uh, he's basically a corporate Democrat, you know, a, a Wall Street Democrat. I was a huge fan of Bernie Sanders and still am. And I wish, you know, I think, I think the deck was stacked against him, as they say. Um, and the, 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 the ruling, the, the, the powers that be in the Democratic Party, you know, they didn't want Bernie Sanders because they knew that their corporate donors didn't want Bernie Sanders. Um, it, it's sad that both parties have become so dependent on corporate donations that that's all they see almost. Our film festival is about many issues like of contemporary world, like politics, economy, ecology, technology. How do you see the importance of cinema as you are doing to, you know, give people awareness and resistance power? Well, I may be a bit biased, but I, I think documentaries are extremely important. Um, 
it's wonderful that there, there's, I'd say there's a much healthier uh, um, documentary community now, at, or you know, a, a, uh, a platform for independent documentary filmmaking. I love film festivals and it's great. And I took both of my films to festivals all over the world and it's so rewarding to but yeah, I'm I'm delighted. I I only wish I could be there in person, and talk to a you know a live audience and do do a Q and A after the film. But uh, maybe on the next one. And do you want to say something for the Brazilian audience? I I'm just so so grateful uh, that that you have your festival has has chosen our film out of many. I'm sure that you could have chosen, um, and. Uh, you know, it's it's a great honor, and um, it, it's why we do these films. You know, is is to try and uh, I it's why I do them anyway to try to feel that you're contributing to the solution in some way. We all have to do what we can. Thanks. Obrigada. Thank you. Thank you, Flavia. Esse foi Fred Pibari, encerrando a nossa série de entrevistas aqui da Mostra Ecofalante 2020. Mas continue conosco, porque muitos debates e muitas ideias inspiradoras ainda vêm por aí.